What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp speed model for you. So in today's video, uh, we I actually took an image from uh, a 3D rendering and I'm bringing that back into SketchUp with Photo Match and I'm gonna model the building that way. So let's go ahead and just jump into this. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna give credit for the image. The image is from Dana Dez. Uh, the, the image is titled Norway and you can find that on cgarchitect.com. Um, I will link to that in the notes below so you guys can check out the image. It's a really cool rendering. I really like it, but I just wanted to kind of bring that image in and uh, see if we could go ahead and get in here and model that. So the first thing I did is I brought my image in using the match photo tools and you can see how I turn those on um, in my tray off to the right hand side of the page there's an option for match photo so I clicked the little plus button in there I selected my photo and then I set up my axes along the building um, and I do have a tutorial for match photo um, if you don't know how to do that but um, in the last image that I created I didn't use match photo I just kind of like eyeballed it in this case I wanted to come in here and try it a little different. And so once I kind of got my axes set up and got everything kind of set up along the red, blue, and green axes, I came in here and I started modeling things. And uh, usually the way that works is what you'll do is you'll start on one end and uh, you'll come in here and you'll kind of rough out the shape of your building and then push pull it along the length of your building just like this. So you can see how I did that and then I came in here and I drew this kind of upper part up above. Um, and uh, then I kind of used the offset tool on the ends to push pull my roof. Um, so you can see how I created my general shape, then I created the roofs, and I push-pulled those. And uh, you can see how one of the things that I did in there was I, uh, I uh, only push-pulled them part of the way for the end pieces of the roof, and then I came in here and... Um, I did the middle piece of the roof and then I push pulled that the rest of the way and that was just to kind of keep that from uh, having any weird overlaps when I did that. So the next thing I did is I came in here and I modeled this kind of uh, decorative wood piece on the top here and this was actually a little bit tricky because what you want to do is you want all of these to be the same size and if you use the offset tool then the center pieces will be bigger than the edge pieces so what I ended up doing is I ended up drawing lines along the midpoints and then just kind of going in there and uh, roughing those out individually. So next thing I did is I came in here and I worked on the doors and windows and you can see how the first thing I did for that is I used the guides on the bottom there to set my bottom and top height of my lower windows. I was less worried about that on the upper windows because it was just a repetition of the same window twice. So I just uh, use components in here in order to create that. So, and for any of you that watched this last one, um, I got a couple comments about how I should be doing the window panes with components. And uh, you're right, I was probably getting a little too detailed in there because all the little panes in there of glass weren't all uniform. Some of them were like a little thicker on the middle and that kind of thing. But then I kind of realized that if you came in here and you modeled this, um, you wouldn't really be able to tell from where we were getting all of our images from. So anyway, and uh, so what I tried to do this time is I'm reusing the same pain component over and over again. So that way when I come in here and I add uh, like uh, materials to it and stuff like that, I'd get multiple panes in here at the same time. So and then to model this little roof overhang, I just kind of push pulled a rectangle out. And then I just drew an angled piece along that and I push pulled along that to give me that angled look. But you can see how even in this door I'm coming in here and I'm using components to model these window panes to save time. Now just, just realizing that since this isn't like a super high detailed rendering piece or anything like that that I'm trying to create, um, I didn't really need to come in here and model each one of the panes separately and model all the crazy trim in here and stuff like that. And that's not to say that you can't do that, you just kind of have to be aware of what you're trying to do. So you can see how in this case I was coming in here and uh, once, I, once I brought the pane component over I drew a rectangle and then I used the offset tool to offset that down to the bottom and the top just like that um, so that uh, everything would kind of have the same height. But you can see how I'm coming in here and I'm kind of uh, detailing out the um, window sills and I just drew a rectangle and push pulled those out and I just kind of picked a depth and then just made everything the same depth in here so the next thing I did is I came in here and I copied these windows um, and you can see how I drew a line from the edge right here that's so when I flip this I could just move that line to the edge um, so that th these would be the same distance from each end of the building 
So once I flipped that, I came in here and I kind of modeled this uh, this roof deck. And all I did is I just created a rectangle and then I push pulled it out so that I'd have my deck up here. So, and then once I did that, I came in here and I started detailing out the rest of the front door and the windows and stuff like that. And you can see how I'm doing a lot of uh, like mirroring and that kind of thing. I always do that when I'm dealing with symmetrical pieces so that when I flip something, uh, the uh, piece on the other side will be the same width and the same size as the stuff on the side that I got everything from. So mirroring symmetrical objects is always a good idea, um, as is using components for objects that repeat like these windows. So you can see how now I'm coming in here and I'm kind of detailing out those windows. Um, I, I'm detailing out the door right now and I did that just by uh, moving the baseline up and using inferencing to make sure that uh, that that line right across the middle there is the same height on this door as it was on the door on the end because you kind of want your glass to be the same height everywhere um, and it ended up a little different with the uh, with the windows right here on the front but I wanted my door windows to be kind of the same height so and then what I did is I just copied all of those windows and doors to the top up here. So I just reused what I used on the front door. And that might or might not work depending on what your front door looks like. But so the next thing I did is I came in here and I created this, or uh, I gave some depth to this uh, decorative wood piece over the top. And all I did is I uh, put that into a group and then I push pulled it. And then when I um, put it into a group, I could kind of move it back. So I had to push pull it out away from my building and then move the entire group back. And that's part of why I did a group is so that my geometry wouldn't merge in there. And if you have any questions about any of this, just leave them below. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I just kind of want to keep this uh, video moving. I don't want it to be like four hours long. So if you have any questions, let me know. But the next thing I did is I came in here and I started creating the, uh, the handrail for this deck. And so the first thing I did is I came in here and I divided that line. So I just right clicked on that line and divided it so that it had three segments. And then I came in here and I modeled these kind of corner pieces just like this and I made those components. And then I came in here and I started figuring out how wide the top piece would be and then I extruded that across. And then I also extruded it back to the wall. And then uh, same thing for this bottom rail. I just kind of drew a rectangle and extruded that across just like this and I did that on both sides so you can see I came in here I drew a rectangle and I extruded that across and then I did the same thing with the top rail I just kind of extruded it back just like this so now I've got a top rail and a bottom rail well now I could come in here and I could start modeling out the uh, the pickets that go in between the support rails so what I did is I came in here and I uh, divided these into two and a half inch segments or as close to that as I could get and then I created kind of a picket piece um, and I made it a component and then I used the move tool in copy mode to create a bunch of those different copies and um, actually in the corner there you can tell that that didn't really um, everything's not super symmetrical um, or there, there's a little bit wider gap on the end there than there would have been anywhere else And you could definitely come in there and work with that a little bit more if you wanted to again It's it's all kind of what you're trying to create and how much detail you're trying to get into So but you can see how I did this on all these pieces where I just made them all the same segment size And then I copied them across and then I copied them all the way across um, The entire deck just like that so I didn't have to do each one individually so then I came in here and I drew the support pieces and um, I had to try my sizes a couple times because that came out a little bigger than I thought that I really wanted it to be. But I ended up settling on a size that I liked and then I made it a component and I copied it across and then extruded it down. So the next thing I did is I came in here and I modeled the, uh, the uh, trim on the corners just like this and all that. All that went into that is I just kind of drew a little segment across and then drew it straight up. And all I was doing was trying to separate those uh, separate those faces so I could come in there and color them separately. So, and then you can see I'm coming in here and I'm putting my, uh, my handrail in a group. And I got a couple things in that group that I didn't want. So I kind of used the outliner to just kind of drag them out of that group. Um, but the reason I did that is because I was coming in here and I wanted to be able to hide that rail so that I could come in here and draw this trim. So once I was able to hide that rail, I could get in here and I could draw this trim up in here real quick, just like this. And 
you know, you, you always have to kind of work with your geometry a little bit to make sure that uh, all your faces are staying in and everything like that. It's never going to be perfect the first try. So just kind of um, trial and error it until you get what you want. So the next thing I did is I came in here and I started working with um, with textures. So the first thing I did is I brought in the uh, default SketchUp roofing tile Spanish. And then I came in here and I edited the color of that so that it was close to what was in the picture. So you can see how I went to the edit tab, I changed things on the color wheel so that that was more of a bluish grayish type color. So and then I came in here and I started working with like siding textures and the siding texture was the same way. I came in here and I added that and you can see how I had some areas where I had some faces behind my windows showing through so I had to go in there and clean that up. But I did the same thing, I came in here and I edited it with the color wheel to kind of change the uh, color of it but then I also came in here and I changed the size of the texture so that it would kind of fit um, what was in the building so you can see how it started off really wide and then I came in here and I changed it so that I got more of the narrow siding look so and then I came in here and uh, I added the glass texture to my windows just to make those translucent. In this case, I use the uh, glass sky reflection. Um, it just kind of depends on what look you're going for, which glass you use. But I had a little bit of uh, face bleed over on here, so I had to come in here and clean some stuff up. But, um, you know, and you're, you're always going to have to do that a little bit. Um, it's not a big deal. It's just a little bit time consuming. So, and then I kind of noticed that uh, these were at more of like a 90 degree angle on the edge here. So I came in here and I kind of fixed those so that I could offset them and create this kind of red color. And I just came in here and I picked a red color that was close to what my siding was. Um, it didn't end up being exact, but uh, it ended up being close enough for what I was trying to do. So, and then I came in here and I did the same thing on the back side. I just kind of used the protractor to uh, draw kind of a 90 degree um, edge across this. And then I had to just come in here and kind of clean this up a little bit to make it look the way that I wanted it to look. So, and you can see how I'm, I'm constantly going back to look at my image just to kind of see like how close I am and that kind of thing. And you'll also notice that I'm only putting textures on this one side. That's partially because I only have an image on this one side and partially because um, this is the image that I'm going for. I want an image from this angle. So I don't really care about putting textures on the back side or the far side. But you could definitely go in there and do that. Um, you might get a little tricky if you go in there and try to do it with photo match without a photo. But uh, you could definitely go in there and just kind of eyeball it and add some windows and stuff like that but then I came in here and I started working on my site and uh, so what I ended up doing with my site is first of all I drew the kind of um, the steps coming off the building and then I threw the whole building in a group and the reason I put the whole building in a group is because I was actually gonna come in here and create a grid to work with the uh, sandbox tools so you can see how the buildings in a group and what I'm doing is I'm just copying the inlines just like this and I'm just repeating those because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into sandbox tools um, which is built into SketchUp and I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of push pull the uh, the mesh that I created in here to create kind of a drop down site just like this so you can see how that uh, gives me kind of this sloping look well then what I did is I came in here and I wanted to have kind of a planting bed in here but um, it, it, since I'd already done the uh, site work in here what I needed to do is I needed to what I ended up doing is I drew the planting bed up above as a face just like this so I ended up moving that up a little bit um, and I had to clean some stuff up because I didn't draw it right the first time. But I just draw kind of this rectangular shape and then I click on it. And then I use the drape option in SketchUp. And what drape does is it'll drop an object onto your mesh just like this. So you can see how it dropped that rectangle onto that site work mesh um, so that it was like a separate face. And one thing to note is I did go in there and I did uh, turn all the edges to... Um, softened and smooth and so when you uh, soften and smooth those edges what that means is that becomes a complete um, face that you can just drop textures on so and uh, partially I ended up using selection toys by uh, Tom Tom to come in there and do that and basically that's an extension you can get from the sketchcation warehouse or I think it's in the SketchUp warehouse as well where you can right click and say I want to select edges only or faces only stuff like that so and then the last thing I did is I came in here and I brought in some uh, 
some uh, landscaping components from SketchUp. So, and I brought in the 2D components just like this. And all I was really doing is I was just kind of detailing out my landscape a little bit. Um, and I like to do this with the 2D components just because uh, you don't get the same number of um, like polygons and stuff like that. You don't make your model like a super high poly model. So anyway, you could see what I did there at the end is I came in there and I selected everything and I moved it across and then I mirrored it across the back side um, just so that I could kind of um, use the same plants on the other side that I used on the front side. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you have anything you had questions on, uh, feel free to leave a question in the comments below. I know I went through some of this stuff a little bit fast. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you really like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.